part of the constituencies which are said to be and been protected by the constitution up the year 2024. We have only one year, that's 2023. And by the time of the year 2024, some constituencies not, may not be seeing the right of the day because they will be scrapped for they have not met the requirements of the tenants as it is supposed to be in the constitution as it comes to a population threshold. So, Madam Speaker, I say time that we should allow the amendment of this constitution in this part of the source where it has emanated from, because what's important is the amendment of the constitution. Even though when it comes to that uh, stage of amendment, I will bring that idea of amending the constitution so that at least the, co the constituencies which have been sent to be threatened by the existence of the, con con uh, of the constitution, or whereby if they have not met the direction, they are supposed to be scrapped off as I and a colleague of mine here saying that they should be scrapped off if that moment come in, we will come with an amendment to see that they still continue to exist. For if people have been given a chance to have a constituency, and now you come to tell them that those, those constituencies should be stacked off, Madam Speaker, that won't, won't be a source or a little bit of chaos. Now as I sit down, the idea of amending the constitution to entrench the CDF and GAF should be at least accommodated by every member in this parliament. For without that one, we are being left at the mercy of those who call short of the day, possibly the executive, because they may decide that today we are going to have CDF and somebody else come in the same office tomorrow and says that we should not have it. We are the mass of activists in this Republic of Kenya. Whereby activists sleep one night, the following day, they go to court and they say that CDF is not in the constitution. That's why I'm supporting the constitution amendment so that we can have GAF and CDF in the constitution. When it comes to having CSs, cabinet secretaries coming in this house, we address it at the right time when it comes. Because I still believe, as far as I'm concerned, having gone through that constitution and being one of those people who did a campaign for this constitution in the year 2010, that those are strangers in this house. In despite of the sign which I am in the house, those are strangers. Let's not mix ones. They are strangers. As an advocate, I will not, make, I will not be intimidated by anybody to support what is wrong. It is wrong and it is wrong. But what is right, we are supposed to support it. That's all, my, Madam Speaker. I support the motion as it is. Honorable Abdul Haro, Mandela South. Honorable Speaker, sorry, I had contributed to this motion last week. Thank you. Honorable members, uh, please note if you've contributed, you cannot contribute twice to the same motion. This chance will go to member for Dagoretti North, Honorable Beatrice. Elashi, I see she's not in the house. Next chance will go to Honorable Paul Biego, Chesume. Okay, not in the house. Honorable Robert Mbui, Katiani, you have contributed. Um, Honorable Julius L Ruto, Kese. Uh, thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity you've awarded me to make a contribution on the motion before us. I think this motion is a continuation of what we had already discussed in the previous session, uh, where all of us are, are of the interest that CDF, NGAV, and any other related decentralized fund is a fund that was designed to bring out the equalization among our communities and across the board in the country, Kenya. I know over time it has come a lot of challenges because of the related acts and those people who have tried to divine uh, the placement of this particular fund. But when you look at the spirit of the same fund and from the feedback of the intended support people, they really appreciate that the fund has really transformed their livelihood. To avoid all these 
shenanigans and all these legal litigations here and there, we all know that constitution is the supreme law of the country. And it's from the constitution that we derive the powers, we derive the legislation, we derive the orders, we derive the functions and the applicability of all these particular laws. So I stand to support that it is high time that when such opportunity has come, let us all of us embrace the discussion for the good and for the benefit of the people of Kenya, as it is stipulated in Article 1, that all these powers belong to the people of Kenya. I know this amendment to the Constitution also has come with other proposals, including that the Parliament can allow the CSS to come in here so that they can be cross-examined, they can be questioned by the whole representative of the people, which in my case, to such that is a debatable discussion. And uh, if it is for the good of the people of Kenya that the CSS come across here, we subject them to cross-discussion questions and for them to explain themselves to Kenyans here, then be it be good. Though there are several schools of thought here, I've had local minds are telling us uh, when they are here, uh, will have uh, mixed up the kind of the system of administration from presidential and parliamentary. But it is good for us to discuss and look at the objective and the spirit in this amendment so that we are able to progressively improve governance and citizen participatory 